Welcome back to the channel guys, my name is Gareth, this is Tech Check. Well, we're already into 2023 and I've not wished anyone a Happy New Year yet. So, Happy New Year to each and every one of my subscribers. It's officially the first video of 2023. Last week's video was one that I recorded at the back end of 2022, just never got round to actually editing it. So, we're going to set off on the right foot from now on and I'm going to start making sure that we've got videos each week on a Sunday. So. This week, guys, we're going to review this product from Orico. They reached out to me and said, we've done a bit of a, a new reiteration of our five port docking station. This one's a six in one docking station. Would you be interested in reviewing? I said, absolutely. Let's have a look. So we're going to unbox it. We're going to review it. We'll test it. And then we'll give you that seal of approval. Is it actually worth it? Let's do this. So there we go, guys. Orico six in one docking station, PW11 6P. Essentially, it's an upgrade from their PW11 5P with one extra port. Let's get in it. So first impressions then, guys. It's quite a smart, nice looking docking station. It comes in this gunmetal grey finish uh, on this aluminium shroud. The cable that it comes with is 0.2 meters. It's a USB type C cable. It is limited to five gigabits per second, so please be aware of that. On this side here, we have got an 100 watt charging port, which is fantastic for instance, if you've got a tablet or a laptop that's only got one charging point and you've got multiple other connections that you'd like to charge at the same time, maybe you wanna get your mobile phone plugged in, you don't have all day, then this would do a really good job to charge those really quickly. We've got a 4K HDMI port here. That being said, this 4K port here is limited to 4K 30, so don't think you're gonna get 60 FPS from this input here. We've got a USB type C, again, five gigabits per second. And on the other end, we've got three type A USB ports as well at five gigabits per second. In the middle, we've got a light that's gonna obviously turn on, tell us whether we've got any actual connections or connectivity. I would have liked to have seen uh, an SD card reader. Uh, for me, having so many cameras, SD cards, filming all the time, it's an absolute ball ache to reach over the back of the monitor, plug it into a docking station that's dangling from a USB-C port at the front of my computer. With this, I could have got an extension cable, run it down the back of the computer and stuck it under the desk. And then you've got an Andy device, which you can plug and connect everything to. So it's a bit of a shame not to see either an RJ45 connection or an SD card reader on this. Um, that being said, I do do a little bit of due diligence and I've just checked Orico's website and this is one variation. The other variation does get rid of the actual 5 gigabit USB-C port and replaces it with an RJ45. So there is going to be two different options. So just a pity they're missing out on the SD card reader. Let's give it a test, see whether we actually get 5 gigabits per second on these A and C ports. So there we have it guys, I've just jerry-rigged here. We've got our USB-C connected to our docking station that's then connected to the front panel USB-C connector on my Leon Lee case. We'll now open Crystal Dismark, which is here guys, and we'll press uh, basically one gigabyte. We're gonna transfer this to a Gen 4 drive on my actual computer. We'll put it in gigabits per second. We'll press all. So as you can see there guys, not too bad at all. Just getting under five gigabits per second on the top two and on both read and write. So absolutely fine. That's interesting guys. So I've just connected my USB charger to the actual 100 watt charge point on this. Connected this to a tablet that was very, low, very, very low on battery. I did it on purpose just to actually see whether it would work. As you can see, we were on zero a second ago, it's now charging this tablet at 1%. When I charged it through the actual charger itself, through the USB-C, well, it didn't want to actually work. Let's charge it and see it one more time. So it's providing sufficient power to the actual docking station. And then we'll plug that into the actual tablet itself. There we go. So it's not getting enough power to actually charge the tablet while it's plugged in through the actual uh, docking station itself. I know when this cable is actually charging because it provides me with a red light here and when it's charged, it goes blue. Yeah, 
see there's no problems at all with the actual cable so just something to uh, be mindful of just there one thing i want to try is i have another docking station now this one's a little bit more expensive again comes with this 0.2 meter uh, usb-c cable and i'll talk a little bit more about this one just after but i just want to try and see whether this one actually charges it because again this one's got 100 watts pass through as well no problems whatsoever so again, red light indicating providing sufficient power to the actual um, all-in-one here. And then that's connected to this particular tablet. And apologies if you can't see, but essentially it's now providing power, enough power to actually charge the battery inside this Tab A from Samsung. So very, very straightforward, simple test. Two separate little docking stations. This one slightly different to this one because this one actually does provide enough power to charge this so again not a great start for this one so there you have it guys absolutely no problem with regards to read and write speeds on the advertised five gigabits per second you'll have no issue with regards to the type a or the type c ports whatsoever i've got no reason to disbelieve a 4k hdmi port but just obviously do your due diligence it will all depend on obviously screen type and stuff like that. If you've got a 19, 20, 1080p or a 1440p panel, then it's not going to make any difference whatsoever. It's just stipulating 4K30. So it was a little bit disappointing with regards to the 100 watt charge point. I'm not going to lie. Uh, I would have loved for that to have uh, actually worked. But that's the beauty about reviewing particular uh, products sometimes if this was the absolute reason that you was going to get this particular docking station and on this occasion it didn't provide enough power to charge that samsung tablet there then well you've just got your own answer so let's move on to the last point then guys which is obviously price essentially this retails normally for 29.99 dollars one thing i can tell you guys is there is actually 60 percent coupon at this moment in time I will leave a link down in the description for this particular product, but when I've just gone to check out on Amazon, it made it about 15, 16 pounds, and that's a pretty good deal. Now, obviously it's a bit of a deal breaker with regards to the charge point. Now, again, I will hold my hands up if this particular cable didn't provide enough power or for whatever reason, but one thing I can say is we also tried this one here from a competitor, and it had no issues whatsoever. So the main difference between this one here and this one here is this one is around $60. This one, well, as I've just said, is about 15, 16 on offer at this moment in time, or 30 or 60, so it's twice the cost. But with that twice the cost, you do get your uh, USB type A ports, you get your RJ45 plug, you get your 100 watt USB type C connection, you get your SD card readers and you also get two HDMI 4K 60 hertz uh, outputs as well. So again, still cable uh, is the same length, etc. But it's a little larger in terms of width and diameter. So this one here, I think if you're just looking for a docking station that's going to provide you with a few more USBs, that's got five gigabits per second that works really, really well. And it's got an HDMI app then it's absolutely fine, especially if you can pick it up for a bargain price of around $15, $16. I don't think you can go wrong. It feels well built, looks quite nice. And as you saw on the test, Crystal This Mark um, actually said it provided up to five gigabits per second. So no problems there. So overall, guys, for me, I think I'm going to give it a miss. Uh, that's primarily because it's missing these SD card readers. It's nice to have that 4K60, and it's also nice to know that the USB pass-through to provide power actually does work. So I'm hoping you found it insightful. If you have, don't forget to leave a like on the video, guys. If you've not done already, smash that subscriber button. Loads more coming up on the channel, so I hope to see you then.